A staggering 58% of people struggle to fall asleep and many have turned to melatonin supplements, especially now because of reports of melatonin's powerful antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. But with scientists such as Andrew Huberman, professor of neurobiology at Stanford University, ringing the alarm bells and warning against melatonin supplements, is it just another overhyped remedy that should be stopped? Melatonin's list of potential side effects include nightmares, morning grogginess, dependency, and because melatonin is a hormone, it's possible that melatonin supplements can affect hormonal development, including puberty, menstrual cycles, and overproduction of a hormone called prolactin. So why do I still use melatonin supplements? Well, let's explore the science and clinical studies to figure out if they can help improve our sleep and health, or whether in fact they should be avoided. The research on melatonin is vast, so before we start looking at melatonin's antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects, let's start with sleep. Melatonin is made naturally in our body by the pineal gland in the brain. It follows our circadian rhythm with low levels during the day and high levels at night. It activates two receptors called MT1 and MT2 to exert beneficial actions in sleep and circadian abnormalities, as well as mood disorders, learning and memory, and neuroprotection. Think of melatonin as the conductor of our circadian rhythms, so it helps to coordinate all of these different processes and neuroendocrine pathways. Which is crucial, sleep is needed for repair, for memory consolidation, and a whole host of other functions. For some people who struggle to fall asleep, their melatonin levels don't rise at the correct time, so a massive 2020 meta-analysis was done, looking at randomized controlled trials of melatonin, and it found that melatonin results in a statistically significant decrease in sleep latency, as in, it helps people fall asleep faster. Let's examine a couple of those individual studies that the clinical guidelines reference. In a randomized trial of 116 patients, one group took 500 micrograms of melatonin one hour before they tried to fall asleep, and the other group took a placebo. After four weeks, the melatonin group could fall asleep 34 minutes faster compared to placebo. The next trial looked at dose. This one was in children, and while melatonin did help these children fall asleep faster, there was no additional benefit to the high-dose melatonin compared to the lower doses. Overall then, yes, melatonin can help patients fall asleep faster, but there's a couple of crucial points here. Melatonin is best used as a chronobiotic agent, meaning it's able to synchronize and reset our circadian rhythms. However, the timing of melatonin supplements are crucial. If it's taken one to two hours before trying to fall asleep, then it can help reset our circadian rhythms. But if melatonin supplements are taken later at night, there is no benefit. So low-dose melatonin supplements, around 300 micrograms, taken one to two hours before trying to fall asleep, can help people fall asleep faster. But if you can fall asleep quickly, there's likely little to no additional benefit from taking melatonin supplements. The caveat is that there is a possible link between melatonin levels and aging, which we'll come to later in the video. For people who can already fall asleep quickly, a massive 2022 meta-analysis was done, and while there was a statistically significant improvement in overall sleep quality, the effect is very small, and there's lots of disagreement between the individual studies. We'll cover the melatonin and aging link shortly, but now let's address the elephant in the room, safety. Because many of the melatonin supplements are anything but low dose, you can buy all the way up to 10 milligram doses over the counter. We have no idea what the long-term consequences are of taking high dose melatonin supplements. All of the studies that we've got so far are short term. Here's a snippet from Professor Andrew Huberman. Now, I'm guessing that many of you are probably asking, should I take melatonin? My personal bias on this is, except in rare cases, no for the following reason. Melatonin has a second function, which is that melatonin also suppresses the onset of puberty. In kids, and especially in babies, melatonin isn't just released in the evening, 12 to 16 hours after we wake. Melatonin is released chronically or tonically throughout the day and night. And that chronic or tonic release of melatonin is known to suppress some of the other hormones in other regions of the brain that trigger the onset of puberty. Now, if you or your child has been taking melatonin, don't freak out. As always, any kind of uh, supplement or anything that you're going to take or think about taking, you really need to consult with your doctor. However, melatonin is known to suppress the onset of puberty. So supplementing melatonin could be problematic for that reason. But if, you're all, if you've already gone through puberty, 
it could also have some impact on other hormone systems in your body. So that's why I personally don't like to use melatonin to fall asleep. So I completely agree with Professor Andrew Huberman. We should absolutely be avoiding high-dose melatonin supplements because we simply don't know the safety profile. Plus, from the studies that we've got so far, it's highly unlikely that there are any additional benefits from mega-dosing melatonin. And with increasing doses come increasing side effects, including headaches, morning grogginess, dizziness, and dry mouth. Also, like we went through at the beginning of the video, melatonin is a hormone, so it's possible that melatonin supplements do affect hormonal development. There are certainly potential risks by taking high-dose melatonin. Now, melatonin doesn't only affect sleep, it's also got antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. This is especially important to consider with respect to aging. As we age, there's a tenfold decrease in the amount of melatonin that our body produces, which results in a significant attenuation of the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory effects. So it's possible that a vicious cycle is at play, where melatonin levels drop with age, and at the same time aging is worsened as a consequence of that melatonin deficiency. While we sleep, our body produces about 80 micrograms per hour of melatonin. But since those levels go down as we age, older adults can consider using a low-dose, prolonged-release version of melatonin to restore their levels back to a youthful state. But I want to be clear that the evidence for potential benefits by using the strategy of low-dose, prolonged-release versions of melatonin, they're based on single-cell and mice studies. There are no good human studies, for example, showing that low-dose prolonged-release melatonin will result in lower heart attacks or strokes or diabetes. So let's try and pull everything together. Low-dose melatonin supplements, around 300 micrograms, if taken 1 to 2 hours before trying to fall asleep, can help patients fall asleep faster, and this is exactly how I use melatonin supplements, and I sleep well. But this strategy should only be used if you have problems falling asleep. If you can already fall asleep, then melatonin supplements will likely offer no additional benefits, with the caveat of a potential link with aging. As we age, there's a gradual decrease in the amount of melatonin that our body produces, so one idea is to use a low-dose, prolonged-release version of melatonin to restore these levels back to a more youthful state. But this is a hypothesis. There's no evidence at the moment that this is beneficial for humans. If someone elected for the strategy, the melatonin should still be taken about 1 to 2 hours before trying to fall asleep. When it comes to high-dose melatonin supplements, we have no idea the long-term health consequences. Plus, it's likely that there's no additional benefits, so at this stage, I think they should be avoided. Professor Andrew Huberman is right to warn against the inappropriate use of melatonin supplements, and that's a lesson that should be applied to all supplements. If you're considering taking a supplement, you have to make sure that it's first safe. And on the topic of aging, if you want to know all of the research-based strategies to help reduce wrinkles, make sure to check out this next video here. And if you want early access to these videos, please check out the pinned comment where you can find a link to my Patreon.